Um, have I, have I, I don't think I've ever talked with you about what kind, what happens to your sleep when alcohol is in your bloodstream. Have I done that? No, I don't think, no. Okay, so we're going to just do a little bit of teaching here. And I give this lecture, Brains of Addiction. I don't know if, if you've seen any of my posts on that, but um, Brains of Addiction, I talk a lot about the, the, the depth of sleep that you get. Um, and when your brain gets this uh, slow wave sleep, otherwise called delta wave sleep, uh, that is when the pain receptors get reset. That's when your memories get uh, reset. It's also, um, if a sleep, it's the most dangerous part of our sleep too. Um, babies get 90% of their night at, slow, at the slow wave sleep. And if you change their diaper, they don't wake up. When adults get this slow wave sleep, they only get it for a few minutes and then their body will wake up and check, is, can I smell smoke? Is the heart still beating? Are they still breathing? Kind of a life check. And then they'll cycle back down and try to get back to that slow wave sleep. Health, 15 minutes of this slow wave sleep. But if the fire alarm goes off when you're in that slow wave sleep, you're not waking up until the cycle's over. So it, it's dangerous in that aspect that your body really shuts down. But it's also that type of sleep that really kind of churns and cleans the brain. And it's where the pain receptors get reset. Um, you'll hear patients talk about they'll be on pain medication or alcohol and they'll want to, they'll say, doc, I can't, I can't sleep without it. My pain is so much worse without it. And, you know, you take an event like what you've done this week, which is I went walking in the streets of New York. I pushed my knee more than usual. Well, by the way, I was kind of ketogenic, but boy, there were so many temptations. Who knows what my numbers were and they weren't perfect. And then I, I just kind of reached for my good old faithful to get my brain to shut off and go to sleep. If I was to hook up electrodes to watch your brain sleep, you wouldn't get any slow wave sleep until at least three in the morning if, if you're having that last drink at about six or about nine o'clock, right, right before bed. Uh, so then that only gives you about an hour and a half to get some of, the, some of that repair sleep. Well, you've got a human brain, there's no way that's possible. Um, and when it comes to the habits of, you know, doc, I didn't used to do this, but then the pain got worse. And I, I realized that if I took in a little alcohol, I could get that, you know, brain to shut down. Uh, and now it's kind of a habit where if I don't do it, like you said, you didn't drink on Friday night and you didn't drink on Saturday night and you slept terribly. Right. Yes. Yeah. So, um, the good news is, is that I am a, uh, I'm, my my first love was sleep. Uh, sleep medicine is really something I, I am passionate about. Uh, it's probably what led me into that uh, whole collection of patients with chronic diseases of the brain and knowing that we couldn't ever heal them until we got their brain sleeping well at night. Um, so if you had to look back, um, kind of looking at the accident, um, the injury wow. from the accident, and then after time, the depth of that sleep isn't as deep. And unfortunately, when, you're, when your brain doesn't get that deep sleep, you will wind up the pain syndrome. Um, I'm an internal medicine physician, and I take care of lots of chronic pain uh, or chronic disease of uh, high blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes, overweight. But one of the most um, attractive things that I like to take care of are people who have struggles with their brain. So <clears throat> in, a, in a pain syndrome, um, we look very closely at the places where your body naturally heals the pain. It resets the pain. And it's in a very special part of your sleep called stage four sleep or delta sleep or slow wave sleep. Um, when you have a baby, a baby spends about 90% of that their night in slow wave sleep. And I always, you know, I'm teaching about this. I'll say, you know how you can change a baby's diaper and they don't wake up? You know, that doesn't happen. You know, you touch, you, you know, change the temperature on an adult and we wake up. Uh, but you, you can do something as, as silly as changing the diaper on a baby and they don't wake up. How is that? And it's because 90% of their sleep is, set, is spent in this very special sleep that gets slow wave sleep. Uh, when people are on opiates, when people have chronic pain, and when people use alcohol chronically, especially as a sleep aid, that sleep gets harder and harder to get into the zone where it will lift and repair pain. And that's one of the ways a pain syndrome is, uh, is uh, it unfolds. 
the, the farm, I'll do one more thing because there's been so many questions. I'm trying to answer some of the questions without getting into specifics. But one of the ways the pharmaceutical industry said is, boy, we can just take the molecule of alcohol that helps people sleep and we can give it to them as a sleep aid. And they call it, you know, Sonata or Ambien. And unfortunately, it does really goofy things to their memory and, and to the way they file uh, memories. And it it does a, it's habit forming in the sense that it doesn't give them that restorative deep sleep that um, our brains need to get. It's kind of like booze in a pill. Um, other other um, places we put booze in a pill is if we want alcohol to last for five days in somebody, we call it Librium. If we want alcohol to last for three days in somebody, we put booze in a pill and we call it Valium. Uh, two days in their body, we call it Clonopin. One day we call it Xanax or Ativan. And they're very much used in the world today for helping people with sleep. But what happens is whether they're drinking their alcohol or putting the pill in their system, the depth of sleep is not as good. And you can use that for a couple nights out of the month. But boy, if it's become a chronic habit, um, their sleep isn't very good. So then we get to moments like what was happening with John is he's like, you know, doc, I love this keto diet and everything, but um, the alcohol throws me out of ketosis. What are we going to, you know, I, I can't seem to not uh, do that. I can't get the sleep. And so what I know, what I knew from that history is, oh, he's gotten himself into a habit that if we don't fix it, uh, it becomes a more difficult habit, a more difficult habit. So thankfully, this is early in John's journey. And I said, well, one of my specialties is to reset sleep cycles. Um, and when you reset a sleep cycle, you can't use any of those drugs that look like alcohol or look like a, a cousin of alcohol. So that means none of those benzodiazepines and no Ambien or Sonata, the cousins of Ambien. You know, so none of those sleep aids are going to dive that brain into a deep sleep. So um, I do this a lot. One of the one of the hardest sleep cycles to reset is a patient who's been chronically addicted to opiates, whether that's heroin or oxycontin or um, you know you know morphine. Uh, if I want to reprogram their sleep, that's the most difficult patient. And I use this protocol that I use with John on them as well. And I'll warn the family members that the patient might not remember as much over this sleep protocol. But the family can have, they can, they're going to get a crabby person as they kind of withdraw from using the, the medications they use and, and get the patient to the other side of that. Um, and so I tell them I need, I need the family to put on their amnesia caps and not remember on purpose, like have lots of forgiveness. You're going to be a lot better in three days. And I tell the patient, I need you to not have an agenda. I need you to slow down take the medicine like I tell you to, and know that the reason we're doing this is that if I could look inside your brain, I want to wake up the wires that get your brain really hearty sleep. And those have been sluggish or they've been in the in hibernation or dormant because you've been using other tricks to get your brain to sleep. And we need you to use the original wires and they're kind of out of shape. So this medication is used to kind of use those wires again and get the patient back in shape for that healthy sleep. So the first thing we do is we give them a pretty hearty dose, or, you know, a pretty good dose of the medication at about five o'clock, I think it was Thursday when you took your first dose, right, John? Correct. Yep. And then I, I warn you that it can take two hours to get from your tongue to your brain. Please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click the notification bell so you don't miss out on any new videos. Stay tuned.